Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. In this video, we're going to talk about an important matrix factorization called the QR factorization. So, given some A, which is an M by N matrix, with linearly independent columns, then A can be factored as A equals Q times R, where Q is an M by N matrix whose columns are orthonormal basis for the column space of A, and R is an N by N, and it's an upper triangular matrix with positive diagonal entries. Okay, so we have Q with orthonormal columns, and we have R as a square matrix that's upper triangular with positive diagonal entries. Okay, so why would this be important? Why is the Q factorization important? Well, it's used for many different things, and we can uh, use it for algorithms to solve equations or to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. But one of the easiest ways to demonstrate its value is to look at a times x. This is a calculation we often have to do. But if a is just equal to q times r, then this is the same thing as q times r times x. And we can think about what about the magnitude of a times our x vector. This would be the magnitude of q times r times x. But because we know that q has orthonormal columns, one of the properties of these kinds of matrices is that this magnitude should be the same thing as this magnitude. And this piece should be easier to calculate because we have R and it's just upper triangular. So the idea here is if we represent A in this factorization, oftentimes we can just calculate with R, which is upper triangular, um, and not have to worry about Q because it has orthonormal columns. All right, so now we've seen just a, a hint of the value of the QR factorization. Let's look at actually how to do the QR factorization. All right, so the process for factorizing A. Now we started with the fact that A has to have linearly independent columns. That tell us, tells us the columns of A form a basis for the column space. And all we're gonna do is use the Gram-Schmidt process to turn that basis into an orthonormal basis. And that's gonna be our matrix Q. Q is gonna be the orthonormal basis that we get using Gram-Schmidt on the regular columns of A. Once we have that matrix Q, then we can easily find out what R is by taking Q transpose times A. Now why does that work? Well, if we know that A is equal to Q times R, and we are able to find that Q by finding the orthonormal basis, then we could multiply both sides by Q transpose to get this, but because Q has orthonormal columns, we know that this product over here is just identity, and identity times R is just R. So this gives us a way to find that R matrix after we found Q. All right, let's look at this process in a specific example. All right, so here we have our matrix A, and we want to factor A to get our QR factorization, to find the Q and the R such that A is equal to Q times R. So the first thing is to look at our columns of A. These are not multiples of each other, so they are linearly independent, and we're gonna treat them as a basis for our column space, but now we wanna use Gram-Schmidt to find an orthonormal basis for this column space. So to do that, we'll start, I'll give these two names, I'll call this one U1, and I'll call this other column U2. We wanna find a V1 and V2 to make this an orthonormal basis for this column space. So to do that, we're first going to let V1 equal to U1. That's our first step. Our next step is then to let V2 equal, well, we'll draw a little picture in 2D just to demonstrate what we're doing again. If we have a U1 and a U2, I'm going to let U1 equal V1, and then I'm going to calculate the projection, the projection of u2 onto v1. That will give me this vector, and then the vector that's orthogonal to v1 will be this vector right here, right there. And that will be u2 minus the projection of u2 onto v1. That's our little graphical representation that helps remind us of what that formula is. So we want v2 to be u2 minus the projection of u2 onto v1. All right, now what is this piece? Well, we already know what U2 is. This projection is going to be U, this projection is going to be U2 dotted with V1. 
divided by v1 dotted with v1 times the vector v1. Now we just need to put in the actual pieces. u2 is 4, 1, 4. Minus u2 dot v1. Well, u1 is the same thing as v1, so that's essentially v1. And u2 is right here, so it's really the dot product of these two vectors. That will give me 4 plus 0 plus 4. Then I have v1 dotted with itself. That's 1 plus 0 plus 1, so that will be 2. And I have my vector v1. All right, so I have 4, 1, 4, that vector, minus the vector 4, 0, 4. Looks like this simplifies to 0, 1, 0. So this should be my v2 vector. So now I have a basis, I have an orthogonal basis for my column space, and that's equal to the vectors 1, 0, 1, and 0, 1, 0. But I'm not quite done yet. That's not exactly what I want. What I want is an orthonormal basis. So I have to normalize these two values. Well, the second vector is already normalized. The length of that thing is 1. But the length of this is not 1. So let's find the length of v1. It should be equal to the square root of 1 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 squared. That's the square root of 2. Now take v1 and divide by its length. The result will be a new set of vectors, which will be 1 over root 2, 0, 1 over root 2, and 0, 1, 0. So these are my two new basis vectors. Now this is an orthonormal basis for the column space of A. So these turn out to be the columns for my matrix Q. So this will be my matrix Q. Now to find R, I just need to Q transpose times my matrix A. Well, if I'm using these as the columns of Q, then they will be the rows of Q transpose, so this will look like 1 over root 2, 0, 1 over root 2, and the second row will be 0, 1, 0. So that's my Q transpose. I take that, and here's my matrix A. I'm going to look at this product. Looks like I will get, in the first piece, I will get 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 2. That's 2 over root 2. And then for the second component of that first column, I will get 0. I will get 0 plus 0 plus 0. Then if I go to the second column, I will take this column times this row. Looks like I will get 4 over root 2 plus 4 over root 2. That's 8 over root 2. And then I will take that second column times the second row. And here I'll get the value of 1. So it looks like this should be my matrix R. And so now I have found A to be equal to Q, which is the matrix 1 over root 2, 0, 1 over root 2, 0, 1, 0, times the matrix R, 2 over root 2, 8 over root 2, 0, and 1. And this is my QR factorization. And note that the quick check I can do to make sure that I'm doing things relatively correctly is that my matrix R, it is upper triangular, and does have positive values on the diagonal. All right, so this is a quick demonstration of the QR factorization. And that concludes this video. Thank you.